Hey there, we're gonna start off our countdown to the three greatest bands ever. And I think we're gonna start with a couple of honorable mentions. And when we start thinking of that, like some of the greatest bands that ever was, there's some that are just the best and there's a few that are just almost like the best for everybody. One of the ones that, uh, fortunately they just didn't have enough albums for me to be considered three of the best bands ever, but is the Eagles. If you're gonna pick up an album, if you pick up their greatest hits, it's just that. It is exactly greatest hits. Fortunately, they only released six albums, and although there is tons of hits on scattered through all those albums, it, they just don't have a catalog enough for me to be considered one of the three greatest bands ever. Now, start digging a little deeper into it, and I think that a band that has put out uh, 15 total albums, and uh, they have such varied songs that the progression of how they started out to what they became and all the songs in between is just such a collaboration between the musicians, but also very diversified uh, in the, the music that they did, which is Queen. Now Queen, again, they put out 15 albums, uh, studio albums, two of them after Freddie Mercury passed away. And to me, their styling is just amazing. They have all kinds of different sounds, again, from waltzes to hard rock to, you know, almost disco, different songs that are like that. These are two of my favorite albums in my collection by them, Day at the Races, and probably my favorite, which is The Game. Uh, it's just got Dragon Attack, Play the Game, Need Your Love Tonight, Rock It, uh, Sail Away Sweet Sister. So some really good stuff on that album if you're looking to pick up an album by Queen, but they are right on the edge of being, to me, one of the greatest bands ever. And one that I hadn't really thought about a whole lot until I really started looking back through my collection to see who is really got longevity, but also has a catalog of tremendous music. And i uh, never seen them before, but I wound up seeing uh, this band twice in one year, and which is U2. And when you look at what their catalog is in regards to that, I mean, The Unforgettable Fire, which has some great songs on it. War, of course, right? Rattle and Hum, which is absolutely amazing, the titles and the tracks that are on that. And of course, Joshua Tree, which is just a classic album in general, like that. You look at two of the albums that I've really stuck with, which is uh, one that is a newer release by them, uh, Songs of Experience, which is just, it's a great album. I don't think it gets enough airplay by any means of that. And of course, my favorite album by U2 is That Chung Baby. Um, U2, in my opinion, is a great band right on the edge of being three of the greatest bands. And when we talk about three of the greatest bands, I always kind of break it down so I can cheat a little bit. One of people ask me, who's your, who's your favorite band? And I'll kind of get into that in a little bit, who's my exact favorite, which is kind of off the beaten track of, of that, not in the mainstream of like the greatest bands ever. But they ask me and I can never just say one. So I wind up breaking it down into what I think is the best pop rock band, the best uh, hard rock band, and then also the best rock blues band. So when I start thinking of those, best blues band, which is in the top three greatest bands of all time, Rolling Stones, right? When you look at all the albums that they had, Let It Bleed, which is just amazing, Sticky Fingers, which has all the classics on it, Go Ahead Soup, which was just reissued. You got it, right? Start looking at other other albums that they've had. Their career is like 25 plus studio albums that they've had out, right? Emotional Rescue, Blue and Lonesome, you know? They have such a great catalog. And I think of the Stones is they, the Stones are a band that they never progressed a whole lot. I would think, and what I mean that is, is that you know what you're getting with the with the Stones. You're getting blues rock or ballad blues rock. That's pretty much what it is. There's you know no transcendent of when they started and how they changed and how they've changed their music. But Blue and Lonesome is a really good good album if you haven't heard it. And probably my two favorites 
from the Rolling Stones is Tattoo You. And my favorite of all time is Some Girls by the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones fall then into the top three bands, in my opinion, of all time. Three greatest bands. So that's them. Then you look at what I consider the best hard rock band that there is, which is, of course, Led Zeppelin. Put out eight albums in the 12 years that they were together. And you start out Zeppelin 1, of course, Zeppelin 2, Zeppelin 3, which is a classic, but the insurmountable Led Zeppelin 4, which is just the classic of all rock albums. And of course, it's got Stairway to Heaven on it. But then you look at Houses of the Holy, right? Physical Graffiti, Presence, In Through the Outdoor, right? Coda at the very end of their career, and of course I've got the song remains the same, but if I had to pick one album that I think is the best from, from then, it is of course, undoubtedly, Led Zeppelin IV. But the amount of time that they put together, when you look at this, all these albums in that short amount of time is just amazing. And the skill and craftsmanship that they put out in those albums and the quality of every song that's on all the albums, again, puts them in the top three bands of all time for me. So you look at those, and again, they were the hard rock band, and then I think of what is the best pop rock band. And I really break it down so I can cheat a little bit again, so I can get Zeppelin in there, and you know, the blues band and the rock band, but then you go into it, which is undoubtedly the Beatles. And I don't have a lot of their early stuff, but I have a lot of their stuff. You know, Revolver, which is a terrific album. Rubber Soul, Hey Jude, right? Let It Be, of course. The White Album, which is a classic. Sgt. Pepper, right? Yellow Submarine, Magical Mystery Tour. I've got uh, Abbey Road, new and an old version of it. So one was kind of scratched up and a little beat up. So I went ahead and picked up the remastered edition of it. You know, and a lot of people say, do you like early Beatles or late Beatles? And about the time that I say I like the early Beatles, I listen to the late Beatles and I just can't get enough of the late Beatles. So if you're looking to pick up just two single albums by them, you have to just buy the red and the blue. This will cover everything you want if you're a casual buyer of albums or bands and you want to get like the best and the heart of what their collection is. You buy these two and you'll be set. Again, the Beatles fall into that category, in my opinion, kind of the pop rock band, but that is different than Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones is, is how they started out and how they ended was completely different. The story of when they started was, again, more pop rock, and then when they, they ended their career, they were very experimental. But again, very hard rock at that time also. Very rock as opposed to the pop rock when they first started. So those are my three top bands ever, the three greatest bands ever, which is the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and the Beatles. And again, I started out with saying every once in a while, someone has to have their own little band. They're like, this is my favorite band because not everybody loves it. And that is, by me, my favorite band that not everybody loves. So that consider on my band is Better Than Ezra. We've got two of their albums on a uh, vinyl. Uh, it is Friction Baby and uh, Deluxe. And if I had to pick just one, it's going to be Deluxe. It has two songs, in my opinion, they're just amazing. The Killer Inside and Porcelain. Porcelain is probably their most requested song when you see them in concert. But So this is my little gem of bands that I love, which is better than Ezra. So again, to recap, three greatest bands ever, in my opinion, are the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, and the Beatles. And if I had to take one just on a desert island, I'm probably going to take the Rolling Stones. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tracy. Hi there, uh, we got a uh, pre-order in 
One of the cool things about pre-ordering stuff and going through the band's websites are you can get stuff that is autographed to you. So what we got is uh, mailed to us was uh, John Foreman, lead singer of Switchfoot. And we are going to uh, open his album up here. I don't have any of his solo stuff. I thought we would order it. We've been watching their video streams, live streams of uh, them playing music and connecting with the fans. So we thought we would uh, order this, like all of Switchfoot's music, and we wanted to go ahead and order this and see it. Like I say again, it's supposed to be autographed. The name of the album is Departures. Uh, the uh, inspiration for it is the journey, not the destination, is what it says and what John has put on the website for the uh, new album. So we're going to uh, go ahead and unbox it here, show you the front of it, and then we'll uh, play it a few times and probably give you a review off of it. So uh, very cool. Here's that. And clearly here's the uh, signature uh, autograph there from John Foreman. So i got the front and it is a, a double album set. So again, uh, Departures from John Foreman, uh, lead singer of Switchfoot. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a record review on it. We'll spin it a few times, listen to it, and uh, get back with you soon. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my review on the uh, John Foreman Departures album that I ordered. It actually came autographed. It's one of the cool things you can get when you go through uh, the band's websites or artists' websites is sometimes you can pick up things like that. Yeah, there's autograph on it. Um, John Foreman is the lead singer and the main force behind the band Switchfoot. Uh, this album is called Departures really hadn't heard any of his solo stuff. He's put out uh, numerous solo albums. Uh, thought I would go ahead and pick this one up and uh, take a look at it. It's a double album set. And uh, you know, uh, Switchfoot is a faith-based band. Uh, they're a hard rock band. I uh, actually say a rock band, not really a hard rock band, but they are a, a rock band for sure. Uh, very versatile uh, in their styles from uh, acoustic to uh, heavy sounds. This album here, after listening to it a few times, each time I ran through it, it was kind of like, I like this song, this is my favorite song. And then I listened to it again, I go, well, this song is another one. This is my other favorite song. They kept going in front of each other of what I thought was my favorite song. So I'll give you a review of on a couple of the uh, songs off of here. This album starts off with the ocean beyond the sea. And it is this really big orchestrated with, um, literally like an orchestra, you know, with strings and, and big uh, uh, orchestrated, not piano, but organs and stuff, these really big layers. And the first time I heard it, I was like, wow, if this whole album is like this, I'm probably not going to like it. And then the next song that came into it was the song Education, which is probably could be a Switchfoot song. But then after I listened to it again, and I came back to that first song, Ocean Beyond the Sea, it's so different that I really, really liked it. I'm like, wow, I wish there was another song like that on this album, and there's not. This album is really varied. I mean, the second album, Education, could be a Switchfoot song. Uh, the third song, uh, Side by Side, really has, a, has another featured vocalist, uh, Madison Cunningham, on it, and they really just sing harmonies on that uh, song, uh, and they kind of blend together on it, and it's uh, got a cadence that is really, uh, kind of what John Foreman does with his voice. He has this cadence where he sings and uh, continues with the, uh, the lyrics, how they rhyme together and just keep this uh, ongoing pace throughout the song. But they harmonize really well together. Uh, the third song on, or fourth song on there is A Place Called Earth, which uh, features uh, Lauren Daigle. And she actually sings uh, solo on this song and is a featured uh, you know uh, voice on that song which is really different you don't hear a lot of that well none of that on switchfoot albums at all they don't have guest singers or anything like that so it's really cool to hear that and this this song on there so then you come to the second side of that red and gold which initially i thought that's going to be you know it sounds like a switchfoot song that's going to be one that i'm gonna gonna really like also but then it comes back to again I'm talking about a faith-based band in Switchfoot and definitely John Foreman is. And you you run through this, this, this uh, album is really about uh, struggles and keeping your faith and having uh, inspiration to carry on. 
and uh, that song addresses it. This next one, which was Jesus, I Have My Doubts, and going through and listening to it the first time through, I'm like, this is my favorite song, you know. And we came back to listen to it a second time. I'm like, this is a really good song. And then the one right after that is Thanks Be to God. And uh, again, faith-based song. And uh, it just, for me, rings really true of the Thanks Be to God. And uh, so I'm like, oh, well, that's going to be my favorite song off the album, you know. And then it, then it comes to the next song is The Gift. And I said, uh, unlike uh, Switchfoot albums, when they are... Uh, again, a rock band, and uh, uh, even though they're faith-based, you really don't uh, have the forefront of that being on their albums. I mean, their words and their lyrics definitely have a uh, meaning like that, but not as direct as what this album is, which is really nice to have. Um, in the second disc, again, two albums set here. Uh, Way of the World, and then goes on uh, Lovely, Love is a Rebel Song. Um, and then the, the third song off of the second album is The Valley of the Shadow of the Planned Obsolescence. I'm probably going to pronounce that wrong, but that song is a uh, song that is completely musically Beatlesque. It has a lot of the things that you would hear, like kind of a, a Sgt. Pepper tone to it. Uh, and then it, the uh, last song on the uh, second side, or the first side of the second album was Last Words. And then on the second flip side of the second disc, they give you uh, four songs that are previously on there, but they're recorded live. So it gives you a whole nother take. The, uh, the running time of them are different. So which is kind of cool that they're live. And one thing to note on this is, is that not only is it uh, produced by John Foreman, but it's also on their own label which is uh, lowercase people. Well, they have their own uh, own label that they're putting out their albums on. So very cool there. Um, again, this album here, it's a gatefold, which is always really cool. Has some inside lettering, uh, logoing on it. Um, and then also gives you the words, which again is very, very cool. Cause like most artists now that when they're singing, you can't always tell what they're singing about. You understand the cadence of it and the the, uh, the tones and some of the song, the words to the songs, but you don't necessarily know exactly what the words are to it. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to have those and all the lyrics to the songs, especially on this being a faith-based uh, album and production. Uh, very good. Um, it's, it's an album that uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I really wasn't sure what it was going to be. I was not expecting it to be Switchfoot by any means, but uh, uh, I was, uh, the, the recording uh, quality of it is very good, uh, and the uh, content spoke to me directly uh, on it. And each time I've listened to it, I keep having a different song that's a favorite, so that's always a good thing when you have a song that it's a different favorite each time when you uh, listen to an album. So again, it's Tracy. Thanks for tuning in. We're here at uh, the Kaufman Memorial Garden, uh, hidden gem in Kansas City. So we're going to go inside and take a look around. It's really small, but as you're going to see when it's in bloom, it is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> 